it shouldn't be a surprise when the Lord has you named something, the Fellowship of the Martyrs, that somebody is going to lift an eye and go, really, dude, what are you guys? That they're going to think you're Muslims, that they're going to expect you to strap on bombs, that they're going to whatever. And it shouldn't be a surprise that when you're a homeless shelter, they're going to be drunks that get in fights. It shouldn't be a surprise when you reach out to the most broken that delusional, mentally unstable people are going to show up and you're going to have to try and nurse them to health and some of them aren't going to get healthy. And some of them will leave and do bad things. And because they were at your, your hospital trying to get healthy, even though you tried everything you could and it didn't take, you're probably going to get blamed for it. Anyway, <clears throat> there's a young man that I love very much. His name's Greg Wheeler. He came here really hurting. He had seen both of his parents commit suicide at different times. Blamed himself for their deaths. Had found Jesus, was trying to get his life right, watched a half of one video and decided he needed to be in Liberty and took off walking on foot from Peoria, Illinois to Kansas City, which is a good, you know, seven, eight hours in a car. He called me halfway here, said, hey, is it okay if I come? Didn't ever talk to him before, never heard from him. I said, sure, where are you? And he said, well, I'm outside of St. Louis. Uh, when do you expect to get here? He said, I don't know. It might take me a couple more weeks. <coughs> I'm like, you on foot? He's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, let's pray. Lord, please send somebody to pick him up and make this easy, Lord. Immediately as soon as we hung up the phone, he got a ride to Columbia, Missouri. Guy picked him up, took him home, gave him dinner, and bought him a bus ticket for the rest of the way into Kansas City. Should have prayed before he left home. Uh... He was here for a few months, kind of feeling like he was a prophet, that he needed to call people to correction. He put out a lot of stuff on his Facebook about how bad the Church of America is and whatever. He came already seeing how broken things were, having been hurt by the institutional church. Wanting it to change, weaved in and out, rebuked me once in a while, Walked away, went and lived in a homeless shelter in Topeka for a while. Called me, please, Dad, come get me. I'm sorry. There's holes in my shoes. They threw me out. I don't have anywhere else to go. So drove out and picked him up in the middle of the night and brought him back. He was working a job down in uh, uh, Houston, I think. Some company here in Kansas City put an ad out on Craigslist for roofers to spread asphalt or something. It was a good way to go, and they put you up a hotel. It paid pretty good, and they bring you back in a month. So him and another guy decided they'd go do that, and uh, worked for a couple of months, made some money. On the way back, uh, he got out of the car at a rest stop when they stopped to get gas in Miami, Oklahoma. It's actually Miami, but nobody says it that way. Anyway, so uh, he got a hotel room and he just kind of camped out. When he was here, he always tried to have hours different than everybody else so he could be on the computer late at night and nobody would mess with him and talk to him. And um, He'd sit in my office sometimes all night long and uh, kind of stay after everybody locked up so that he could kind of be alone. Um, we talked to him about isolation and needing to kind of not hide all the time and maybe he ought to take a shower and stuff anyway uh, he uh, he got a hotel room in Miami Miami Oklahoma well according to the testimony of the other brother that went with him he had been smoking k2 k2 is a uh, supposed to be an alternative to marijuana, a legal alternative to marijuana, 
that's all chemicals and it's also hallucinogenic and makes you really paranoid and it's not safe and, and if you're out there messing with K2 I'd really encourage you not to and if your kids or whatever are telling you it's not safe anyway he was drinking a lot of beer sitting in a hotel room he was already fairly afflicted and demons whispering a lot of stuff to him had been through a whole bunch of stuff and been institutionalized before been in foster care bounced around with different family just been through a lot he um, uh, I get a call he, he was down there Jacob came back and was here for I don't know maybe three weeks two and a half weeks something like that and then I get a call from a, a reporter from the AP I think it was the AP Associated Press and uh, says do you know Greg and I'm like yeah and he said, well, he's been arrested for making threats to churches and uh, terroristic threats. And I'm like, okay, well, he probably just said something like, you know, thus saith the Lord, God's going to hit you with an asteroid if you don't repent. And they took it as a threat. The guy says, no, they found 50 Molotov cocktails and a five-gallon thing, uh, a five-gallon gas can and plans with maps of 48 churches in Miami, Oklahoma. I'm like, oh, crap. Well, as it turns out, there were 50 beer bottles with wicks in the trash dumpster outside the hotel with an empty five-gallon container of gas. The maintenance guys saw it in there got concerned called the police Miami is not too far from Oklahoma City and you don't even joke around about bombing buildings in Oklahoma City they're still smarting after the last building so <clears throat> the uh, maintenance guys call the police the police do background checks on whoever's staying at the hotel because the hotel immediately hands them over a list of everybody that's staying at the hotel and one of the maintenance guys says, you know, I remember this guy Greg walking back from Walmart carrying that five-gallon container of gas. And I asked him about it. He said that his car broke down. Well, he didn't have a car. He was on foot. Um, nobody said that the gas container ever had gas in it. It was just a five-gallon um, empty gas can. So the maintenance guys decide they're going to lie, admit it in the newspaper, that they lied and made up a reason to get in his room and when they're in his room find a receipt from Walmart for the gas can uh, and tell the police the police uh, get a warrant and get in and they find torn up in the trash um, a map of the city and where the churches are and all this stuff and some stuff had written kind of a manifesto about needing to change the church in America and how he was going to do this torn up in the trash So they arrest him. Uh, last week he had uh, was supposed to have a hearing in Oklahoma, but uh, the day before it seems like it got transferred into federal uh, federal charge, and Oklahoma dropped their charges, and the feds are picking it up. Now all I see is a kid that had 50 empty beer bottles, and you don't go to the store and buy empty beer bottles. <laughs> you buy them full and then have to empty them yourself. And I don't think he poured them down the sink. So you got a kid hurting alone in a hotel room, smoking K2, drinking 50 bottles of beer, some demon whispers, some stupid plan, and then he throws everything away, talks himself out of it, tears it up, throws it in the trash, and gets arrested. Uh, and the charges in Oklahoma, if you plot to do a bombing, you're going to be charged as if you actually did it. So nobody was hurt, nobody was threatened, nobody even knew about it. It was all just trash in the dumpster. But he's facing I don't know what. With I don't know what kind of public defender, with his family smarting off about him and being mean in the paper and saying it's it, this is where he needs to be. He needs to be locked up. This is the safest for everybody because he's crazy. And he was part of that cult in Kansas City. Well, he also stayed at a homeless shelter in Topeka. 
And he was also really, really hurt by the Institutional Church of America. And nobody's accusing the congregations in Peoria and where he was from of how they neglected and did harm and weren't there for him, didn't come through for him, and uh, didn't show him the love of Christ at a more formative age when he needed it. The folks that let him live rent-free loved him, tried to talk to him, tried to talk sense into him. You know, we get blamed. No way, no how, at any point ever have I suggested to anybody that bombing buildings is the solution to change in the institutional church in America. Now, God may hit him with a hurricane or an asteroid, but that's up to God. Change is going to come by nailing the 95 Theses to the door like Luther did, or by just saying things got to change and modeling for them how things ought to look until people go, you know what? I like that better. That does. That is more beautiful. And people are changing, and that's revival. And this other thing at First Baptist, that's not working. Second Baptist, Third Baptist, whatever. I don't mean to pick on anybody. Uh, so, anyway... Uh, now, Greg comes up in every story, every article, every whatever, every court case over custody for somebody here that has kids and is going through a divorce or whatever. Uh, do you know Greg Wheeler? Weiler. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, you know, this is the culture that you have there of bombing churches. No, 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 no. There's none of that. Absolutely, positively not. When you're talking about loving like Christ, to surrender your life for others, to, to lay down your life for the needs of the poor and the downtrodden around you, that kind of precludes killing anybody. That just, that bombing is just not in the picture. Okay, period. Now, and I don't know what was in his head because it had like the times when the services are and stuff like that, supposedly. And you could say, well, he did that because he wanted maximum death toll or he did that because he wanted to make sure to start a fire at a time when nobody was in the building because the building was the beef that he had, not the people. Whatever. It's up to God to judge. I don't think it's even up to the court to judge because I'm not sure they're judging righteously. But God knows what was in his head. And I've never known him to want to hurt people. I have known him to be desperate for change, to really want something to be different and to be hurt by the way things are. I can say that I've been hurt theologically. I can say that I've seen the, the, the messed upness of the institutional church. I can say that I had a pastor counsel my wife to separate and divorce me because I sold everything and gave it to the poor, and that must be crazy. Never mind that Jesus tells people to do that. So, but even so, I can't say that I've been hurt by the institutional church as much as Greg was or other people we have here that were tossed out of one place after another. I mean, I've been ejected from places. Um... Anyway, and I've certainly had a lot of people that said they were Christians that were vicious to me. But Greg's on another scale of how much he was hurt by the system. Not, and I've never known him, never ever known him to be violent toward people, but to be very generous and caring and just wanting something to change. So he's in his room, he's paranoid, he's drinking stuff, he's alone, demon whispers, plays on his natural tendencies to want things to be different, whispers something to him, he decides it's a bad idea, throws it all away, and right there Satan to uh, get him arrested for blowing up churches when a demon whispered, he played footsies with it for a little bit, long enough to go buy a gas can, long enough to make a map, but then decided it was a bad idea, tore it up, threw it all away. I hope the court will see that. I hope he'll get some kind of good lawyer 
that maybe will show that maintenance guys lying to get into the room where you have an expectation of privacy and providing the information for the police is the hotel working as a state actor as an extension of the police and that's not okay when I ran residence halls at a college I was real clear that I can't just key into somebody's room find weed and then tell the police I found weed so they can get a warrant to go get it at that point I'm acting as an agent of the police Anyway, there are people with more law degrees and uh, experience uh, than me that can fight that all out. I hope you pray for Greg. And I want it out there, uh, my take on it, our stance on it, where we are on it. And uh, if you're a reporter from some newspaper, um, you don't have to call and bother me while I'm trying to minister to people that are hurting. You can just uh, quote me off the video. Um Anyway, <clears throat> that's all for that, just so uh, you know what it is when the time comes and the question is raised. Uh, yeah, we've had people here that we took in, that uh, we gave them a place to stay, they left here and went back to jail. We've had people here that were clean and sober for a while, left here and got back on drugs. We've had people here that um, had beat people up. We have people here that went out and lived on the street, got back on crack, got vagrancy tickets, got, you know, whatever, uh, broke into a store and went to jail. We had all kinds. And uh, we try to love them. And I do not accept responsibility for their stupidity. I do not ac accept responsibility for their susceptibility to demons. We did what we could do. And I believe we did more than the Sunday and Wednesday night churches could have even thought about doing in the structures that they have. And if I am going to have to take crap for Greg Weiler um, and get linked somehow to church bombings, and that is the cost of me having an opportunity for a few months of his life to speak truth to him and to love him and for him to feel like he had a dad for a while, now I guess it's worth it. And I'll take the shots. And I love him. And uh, I want him to get a chance and I want people to help. He is a walking, talking, breathing example of somebody the church turn their back on the institutional system neglected <clears throat> but there's real sweetness in him real goodness and generosity and I don't believe for a minute that he was ever ever going to go through with it I hope somebody shows what kind of mental state he was in the drugs he was on the stuff that was messing with him and uh, gives him a break. Anyway, <clears throat> that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Um, it's out there. It's public information. Might as well clear the air and tell our side. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Please pray for Greg. Uh, a lot of people here love him. Really, really didn't want to see anything like this happen. And nothing really did happen. Nobody died. Nothing was bombed. Nobody was even threatened. A guy in a hotel room listened to the wrong voice. Stopped before it was too late and threw it all away. And, is, and may do the rest of his life in federal prison. And the demons win. And he had opportunity when he was here to listen, to get his cup full, to implement what we were teaching him, and he wouldn't. There was too much pain, too much self-loathing, too much self-condemnation, too much stuff that he wouldn't lay down and 
I'm always going back thinking, what did we, what could we have done different? What could we have said different? Did he need a, did he need one more hug? Did he need one more pat on the back? Did, was there, was there something else I could have done? And those are reasonable introspective conversations to have. But in the end, it is what it is. And, uh, with the limitations that we have on, on people and time and people's willingness to receive, it is what it is. So he's got to go through what he's got to go through to be refined by the Lord. And um, I'm believing that he's going to come out the side, out the other side, better and stronger. I sure hope so. Anyway, that's all. Pray for Greg. God bless you.